Today on Common the Good, MTG, we're playing a Rakdos Lizard Tribal deck. Lizard Tribal. I love tribal decks. Love it. And this new Bloomboro seems to be just filled with tribal cards. And like I said, today we're playing Lizard. What do Lizards do? Man, not only that, it's Rakdos. And Rakdos is such an incredible color. I'm really looking forward to this deck, and I hope you are too. Stay tuned to find out more. Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I am your host, the future Grandmaster of Competitive Goldfish Breeding, Dr. Yukon Socket. Yes, thank you. Film for our live studio audience. Thank you so much. Yukon Socket. Word to your mama. So I'm broadcasting to you from my, say it with me, secret underscore, underscore, underground headquarters. Sorry for messing you up there. And uh, I'm bringing to you a deck I found over on Untapped GG. Yeah, we got, it's a new rotation. It's a new, new set. We got a whole new meta. I got to pick for some weird new areas to try to find decks to play that are interesting, cool, and awesome. And so that's what I'm doing, picking off of the uh, top, Meta lists off on Untap GG at the moment. So today I found a guy, his name is Dr. Kane, and he has an interesting Lizard Tribal Rakdos deck there. And that's what we're going to do. So I love Tribal, like I said before. I love a good Tribal deck. I love a good Rakdos deck. And uh, this one, hopefully, is going to hold up very well. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the cards in this deck. We'll talk a little bit how the deck should work. And then we're going to go out we're going to crush some hopes and dreams. All right, what do we got? We got uh, Creature Kill. Uh, whenever you put out a land, you do a point of damage to an opponent. We're going to start to notice a lot of that, doing one point of damage to the opponent. It's like a grind deck, right? And the other thing, he's got Offspring. So if you got three mana, you can put out two of these guys, which means if you want to put out, you know, you can put this into a deck that has, like, whatever, lots of creatures equals good stuff. Black's usually not the color for that. Usually it's a white thing, but, uh, yeah, you can still do it if you got a nice Orzhov action or something. All right, what do we got here? Uh, whenever a whenever one or more whenever you attack with one or more lizards, it deals one damage to target opponent, and you can put a po you got a popo counter on it only if an opponent lost life this turn. But we got a lot of ways for people to lose life, and so you can get that out there early if you got the extra mana for it. All right, uh, keep your guy alive. It gains plus two plus zero, oh, and whenever it dies, you turn it to the battlefield tapped, and you get a treasure token. Creature kill, and then we got this guy. If an opponent lost life, you can put this guy out. You get two mana, which means you can use it to put some other guy out or something like that. And you can use him for card draw later on. Uh, let's see. If an opponent lost life this turn on your second main phase, exile the top two cards of your library. You can choose one of them, and you may play it, play that card until the end of the turn. So interesting tricks you can play here. Uh, Gev. As Ward, he's 3-2. Other creatures enter the battlefield with initial Popo counter on them. Uh, for each opponent who lost life this turn, we're only playing Solitaire, so it's just going to be one Popo counter. If you're playing this in Commander or some sort of multiplayer, you know he'd be pretty awesome. Uh, whenever you cast a Lizard spell, this guy deals one damage to target opponent. So you can see we got a lot of damage, and we don't have to do anything about it. This guy wants to attack, but the rest of them are just do stuff, and then like it'll happen. Uh, scales here. So, if you're attacking with two lizards, it only costs you one to play it. Target creature gets plus two plus O, oh, gains life leak and indestructible. So, this is your, your super trick right there. Uh, this guy says if a lizard would deal damage to a player or a permanent, it deals that much damage plus one. So, that's great. That means all these extra points of damage are basically two points of damage. So this guy will make everything that much stronger. Generally, 100% additional damage, since we're only dealing one normally. Uh, Jasper is all your dudes, all the, all the creatures you don't own are mercenaries. Okay, At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top X of your or X number of outlaws you control until the enemy cast spells from those. So basically, you get to play off your opponent's library. All right, that's, that's cool. I don't. It's fine. He's a lizard. 
He doesn't really help everybody else out, but pretty much says, yeah, my deck kind of sucks, so I kind of want to play yours. Eh, your deck doesn't suck. It just it does lack a little bit in the strength category. Um, over here, we don't seem to have anything that helps out Lizard specifically, except for Cavern of Souls, which you pick Lizard for. Oh, this guy right here says you can do red mana as long as you're do, using it to pay up for a creature spell. And you can use it to pump up lizards and give them haste if you want to. I And we've got mud flat fishes here. Uh, creature spell, and you can return target lizard from your graveyard to your hand. Great. So yeah, we got a, lizard, a lot of creature-specific typal uh, lands going on here. We got great dual lands. Yeah, this is all going to be a nice, tight, synergistic deck. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to control a tiny bit with our man lands or with our creature kill. There's only eight in here, so they'll do what we can do. We'll get out a bunch of guys and take our actions to just grind people down constantly. Hopefully getting out multiple flame callers so we can get these little pinging actions tuned up to two or three or even four points at a shot. That would be fantastic. Playing down lands with Bind Lasher out plus flame collar will just be a ginormous amount of damage. And then while we still can, while they don't have dudes in the way, coming in and attacking them with as much as we got going on. Will that be enough to hold it together? I certainly hope so. But let's go find out. Before we do, though, let's do as we do every night. Let's say our prayers and talk about what is best in life. Hands together. Dear Black Queen Shouldred, who lives within the dark chambers of my heart, please hear my prayers and grant your blessings as we attempt to crush our enemies, see them driven before us, and to hear the lamentations of the women. All right, we are playing against Pandao. Two mana, no black. Let's see if we can make it work. Put out a guy now. There you go. Put out a guy now so we can kill it. Get out. I think the Gecko is my next favorite card. Look as a jerk. Lizard, let's do this. Yeah, keep it going full steam. Can I do this again, really? I don't know how I had the mana for that, but all right. Send him in. This is not going to help us at all. Let's go for mana. All right, we got him down to six. It's all those little pings that have been helping us out a lot. Go for it. We're going to lose at least two guys out of this deal. Mm 
down to one. Hopefully I can slip this guy out and finish the go. Oh, he's at two. Well, well that's disappointing. Whenever you cast a lizard spell, it all goes well. Victory! All right, we are playing against he Health Goth. Health Goth. All right, nothing for the first turn. Shake our bushy tail. Wave hello in the way we know how. Let's lizard up. All right, now you want to trade off Gev for Gev? I got a lot more Gives where that comes from. Roar! Hey, Chomper, I didn't see you standing there. Good to see you. All right, does he have, is he packing the things that we need to be able to kill his guys? That's the question. Bolly Rot Collar, huh? Not bad. Not a lizard. How dare you? You gonna block there, Sergio? Nope, I didn't think so. Are right, we get both these guys out next turn? Ooh, baby up. I gotta say, I really like these guys. That, uh, the vine slashers. The vine lashers. They're really good. I think there's some comboing that can happen with that. What do you got? What am I gonna get? It's one card. All right, let's go to town. Let's go get him, Jasper. You gonna take the two for that? Chomping, huh? All right, chump away, chump chump. I gotta deal damage from first. 
So let's deal some damage. How he's laid out the force. These guys do a good job of uh, replicating. Perfect. I didn't realize we have him down to two already. Victory. Fire pin against Quispy. All right, so start off with black. That sounds like fun. Lizard. Ooh, I did not count that right. I need to get these guys out and then place out the lands. There you go, two points straight in. Let's chew that guy up. I right, got him down to nine. We're doing good. I can fake someone's death if he tries to kill somebody. I right, got him down to five. Who's back? Unfortunately, I can't keep anybody alive. He wants to kill. He's got it in his blood. I think this wins it for us. Right there. Bam! Good job, little boys. Victory! All right, we are playing against the Ninja 78. All right, so hopefully we can put this thing together. This is definitely number one. Hopefully it won't get killed. Number two. Got some creature control. Ability to keep some stuff alive. We don't have enough mana to keep things alive, though. All right, we got the hard claw out. Guys made him super powerful. All right, we gotta remember this. Keep our mana, go in for the attack, save it, and then afterwards play our dudes. Yeah, the Essence Chandler is super good. He's a new super, like, horrible guy that we're gonna be cursing out for the next three years because he's got super value. Got to kill the lifelinker.
All right, one straight up. Indestructible. All right, we got our boys. They're both out. Got to go for the throat. Fake your own death. All right, I uh, let's see, puts out extra mana there. That's cool. Let's do that. You just to take out the life link. All right, the question is, I think I'd take out the flame caller. That's what I would do. One thing that disappoints is these guys can't nail creatures. They always just go after the, the opponent. How much are you dealing here? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, don't wipe the board. Doesn't have enough mana to wipe a board. All these guys could be potentially wiped out with the whatever the one that just three points to all creatures. Alright, winner winner. Touchdown lava bears. Victory! Alright, we're playing against Carpo. One, two, three. All right, this is a nice, nice mix here. Card number one, card number two, card number three. Where's your pet, you psychopath? You can try to pull that crap on me. All right. This guy's pretty awesome. This guy would be better to come out just to help pump the rest of the dudes up. Is he afraid that he's going to block? I mean, what's the deal here? Good. This is our next dude right there. Okay, he's able to pump, but I need my guys to live. It's like he really wants to kill Gev.
Good for you. Uh, let's go for the pump. And in. So that's only two. We got him down to 14. We're actually tied at the moment. All right, I can play two of these guys next turn. Once I get them out, I want to start playing guys on my second half. Well, because I'll start being able to play stuff at the second half of my stuff. I guess this guy early, though, it'll cause these guys to do even more damage. Or, yeah, when you attack, they'll do damage when they attack. At least one of them will. This guy will do the damage. I'm down to nine. He's down to cards. Hopefully he doesn't have to keep pumping. I only need lizard stuff at this point. Pump! I'm going to put this guy out. We can play something for two, potentially. Ooh, should we go for the kill? Yeah, he's got prowess. He dies regardless, man. All right, you don't have anything to pump with, I'll tell you that. All right, you want to give him up? Nope. There's one guy. We'll put out another guy. And we're good. All right, so this is going to do two immediately. Let's just send them all in. All right, he's down to seven. You got to fake your own death. Who do I want to keep alive? And kill off the Ember Heart. That's probably the best choice here. Right, he's down to three. These are two more. I don't have any cards to discard, so it's not going to help me out. All right, so we're at eight. He is in a wickedly bad situation for himself. All right, you can blow him up for three. All right, I just won. Here we go. Boop, 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 boop. Pam! Touchdown! Lava Bears, victory! All right, so here we are with Dr. Kane's Trixie Lizard Tribal. Uh, yeah, it ended up being a pretty decent deck. I got to tell you, it's it kind of felt like a Platinum Mythic level deck to me because those things always feel like 
Like it's really super focusing on one little element and everything else is just like zero chances of being able to help out with her. Like no defense or like everything's only like two for toughness. Um, that, uh, you know, if they just start, you know, killing all your creatures, there's absolutely nothing you could do. That's the way this deck felt. Like it was really all about one thing and then did nothing else. You know, for having black, black has such a utility usually, and this one doesn't really do it. But it does have the ability to just not people. Where it got a lot of guys doing single points at a time, regardless of what's going on. Whenever a lizard attacks, one point of damage. Whenever a lizard comes into play, one point of damage. Yeah, I mean, it's it was pretty decent, and it did a good job. So, uh, I'm not sure this is one of my favorite decks. It was definitely incredibly interesting. Alright, so let's take a look at it. Who was the MVP? Who was the most valuable player? Um... You know, I to me it feels kind of like this Gev dude kind of was just because you get Popo counters on stuff and he would do a point of damage whenever another lizard, lizard would come and play. And for creatures you have, he's got he has the kind of synergy that you are looking for. The other guy I really liked, I liked the Valley Flame color just because he made everything do an additional point of damage, which meant that became two points of damage. And then because he had like an additional popo counter on whatever the creature is you have out there, then it's going to be like a, then a, like a second point of you know damage it's dealing. Um, the hired claws were great because they did the damage regardless of what's going on. Um, yeah, and then of course this guy, I think you can have a really good land-based deck where you can put out multiples of him and his offspring and he would just slaughter things. Problem is there's only four of them to start off with. So finding that one of or two of these guys to start off with is going to be your hardest part. That's a whole nother deck. I'm sure we'll see somebody do it. All right, so uh, let's see. So who was my MVP? I'm going to go ahead and give it to the Gev, the, the Scaled Scorch. He's only two to put out, but he's got a lot of value, and he's easy to make be a lot more powerful than he currently is. All right, so there we go. Gev, you are going to Disneyland. Congratulations. Uh, number two, why was this deck competitive? Uh, it came off the plat. Oh, I didn't play off plat myth, but that's where I get off of. I got off of the uh, mythic players list. So apparently, it had a it did a really good job with this guy named Doctor Kane, and so yeah, I said let's go ahead and play it. Now Doctor Kane was getting like eighty one percent with it, maybe ninety one. I can't quite tell. No, he was a ninety one percent player. Uh, he was getting eighty one percent with it. I end up getting sixty four. So I was not quite as good. Now I can tell you, it took a while for me to figure out the proper order in which to lay down your creatures, which is important. You know, like the way you need to put this stuff out is you get out uh, the iridescent vine lasher like early, just because you'd be dropping lands early. And him getting those extra points out matter. Then you get out Gev, and then after that you're kind of looking to get out the flame caller. After that, it doesn't really matter. Once you have Gev out and flame caller, everything else is a lot stronger than it would be normally. Not that they're, you know, they're 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 puny, but you got a lot of them. But then making them do an additional point of damage or getting an extra popo counter on it, yeah, that's that's really what you're looking for. So one, two, three. Then after that, you can kind of go easy. So, anyways, um, me learning to play the deck, and if you look at my my particular win curve, it definitely had more losses early. But as I got longer and longer in the tooth on this game, I was doing a lot better with it. Sixty-four percent. That means I won more than two out of every. Uh, three games. It was a good deck. It was definitely competitive. Let's put it that way. Was this deck fun? Let's just take a look. Look at that. One, two, three. That is aggro numbers right there. So I'm going to say, yes, this felt fun, mostly because you were playing early. And the only thing I didn't like is I felt like an existential dread because I had nothing in four, five, six, meaning that I knew I'd be throwing things out, but there's not a lot of card draw in here. So mostly you're just going to run out of cards and then that's it. If you let this deck get beyond mid game, you're not going to hold out very well. So at least that's the way it felt. And it kind of made me scared. Now, does that take away from the fun? Yeah, it does. But still with the win rate, you could tell I should have been just relaxing, trusting with the deck and uh, just having a good time because you could definitely play all of your cards with two mana pretty much for the vast majority of the game. All right. So then lastly, was this deck interesting? Yeah, totally. Because it's got its lizard tribal, so it's a nice tribal deck. We got a bunch of new cards in here, all doing weird stuff. I had no idea that this Jasper Flint was a lizard dude. I just thought he was a weird looking guy. Uh, maybe like a cinder or something like that. 
Nope, turns out he's a lizard, which totally makes well, him work well with this lizard tribal deck. Um, the, the synergy between them was excellent. Yeah, this deck was exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for in a new meta for a new rotation with a brand new set coming out. So 100% super interesting deck. I was happy to have it. All right, so let's add this up. Was this deck competitive? Yes. Was it fun? Yes. Was it interesting? Totes my goats. So that makes this into an A-plus deck. A-plus. And as I'm required by federal law to say, this deck is so choice. I'd highly recommend you pick one up, should you have the means. That is all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the secret underground headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. In the words of my people, shine on, you crazy diamonds. Later.